Yes, so what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video, man. Check it out. NBA news, man. Y'all know, y'all know how it is, man. When the NBA comes to an end, you just gotta go with the news, and everybody's scrapping for a story and all that. And before we even say anything, look. I know I might not be fresh from the barbershop, but I am sporting the Lonzo Ball, man. It ain't as much guile as I would like for it to be or, or as much mushroom, but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, man, let's just get straight to the news. Young Savage, why you trapping so hard? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're only a couple of days removed from the Cavs losing the NBA championship to the Golden State Warriors, and we already hearing about swirlings. LeBron's going here, LeBron's going there, this and that. In fact, this article by Adrian Wojnarowski said, People around the NBA feel LeBron James is likely to go to the Clippers or the Lakers. What? The Clippers or the Lakers? Let's just go with the story first and then we'll get to everything. All right, now right off the bat, he does say that LeBron can't become a free agent until 2018, which which I think that's the biggest thing here. But in the in the article, they cited a few reasons that LeBron would be likely to go to the uh would be likely to go to the uh to the West Coast. I guess the best coast. Who knows? It is what it is. And uh, they said LeBron James hinted at having eyes for other teams. I know they said he wanted to play with Chris Paul, but I thought that they were talking more about they wanted Chris Paul to come to Cleveland so they could have another playmaker. Instead, they got D. Will, which at one time you could argue that D. Will and Chris Paul were like one and two, some of the best young point guards in the league. But uh, 10 years later, that's not even close. I mean, after D. Will left the, at left, uh, the Utah Jazz, he's just a watch. He's a shell of himself. He had some. He had some pretty decent years up there in, at the Nets, but it just wasn't like it was in the beginning when he was playing with Jerry Sloan in Utah. And that was one of the things they always talked about that he couldn't get along with. But anyway, they said, uh, you know, they talked about Melo. They cited D, D Wade or what have, have you. I don't see that happening. I don't think that's that's a big enough thing. LeBron seemingly enjoys L.A. Who don't like L.A.? I mean, they say he has a house out there, so that's not a big deal. He can go out there and visit any time. That doesn't mean necessarily necessarily wants to play for one of those teams who after this year will probably be rebuilding because they're talking about Chris Paul going to one of the other teams like uh, like the San Antonio Spurs or possibly, you know, somewhere else, anywhere but L.A. Um, the Lakers are completely rebuilding. Like I said, they're probably going to end up getting Lonzo Ball, and uh, that's, that's, that's just not going to happen. And Maybe two or three years down the line, I don't even see it happening when we got an older LeBron. I think he's going to finish his career in Cleveland. Uh, LeBron, but the, this reason right here, I'm not even looking at reason number four. Uh, it's fun because he's the best player in the league, whatever. I'm looking at number three as the reason that LeBron would keep something like this going, some of the rumors swirling or whatever. And number three is LeBron wants to keep the Cavaliers on their toes. I mean, who wouldn't want to keep them on their toes? We already know that the Cavaliers front office likes to, likes to, I don't even know what the word is. Let's just get it like this. When LeBron left the first time, he left because he said, hey, I need some help. Cool, we're gonna get you Booby Gibson. Hey, I need some help. Don't worry about it, fam. We got Damon Jones. Damon, Damon Jones, I'm sorry. Hey, I need some help, man. Say no more, fam. We got you. Antoine Jameson, baby. Like, what? And then he's like, yo, I need a bona fide superstar in here. I need some help. Help. Say no more, fam. We got you a 90-year-old Shaq. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I understand this take on it, that LeBron wants to keep the front office on their toes because we just don't know what they're capable of. We don't know, you know, we have to keep the talent in here, and he has to let them know that that we're not going to take, take less than what we have now. It's going to take something else to beat those guys, and I don't know exactly what it is, but... The front office has to know that another Antoine Jameson or or something a reasonable facsimile thereof is not gonna get it. Why do you nigga cap it so hard? Keeping in line with the Clippers, Jerry West bound for the Clippers after the Warriors title run. Now, from reading this article and looking at this man, they're saying that uh that Jerry West himself has stated that he is going to the Clippers. So it's not even speculation anymore at this time. It just says straight up. I knew I was going to be leaving. I didn't know what I was going to be leaving to, West told ESPN. Was this the enemy being productive? Every person is different in terms of their lives and how people age. I don't feel old. I feel really competitive. It's got to feel good to be able to say that at the end of your career when it's winding down. Like we said, Jerry West is 79. He's had a career He's been a he was a great player. He's a Hall of Fame player. Hell, he's the logo. It is what it is, man. One of the greatest players of all time. He's the architect of the Lakers. 
the architect of the Memphis Grizzlies. He got that team together. And then he went back out, and he's the architect of this Golden State Warriors team. And Jerry West, we all know he's the closer, man. So when I saw the news from the other day saying that LeBron might be headed to the Clippers or the Lakers, and then I saw that Jerry West was moving to the Clippers, at first I thought it might be a done deal. I was like, you do not want LeBron to go out there with that slick talking mother and meet with him in any way. Because if Jerry West is there and LeBron is there and it was possible, he was going to the Clippers. It's a done deal. You know, I mean, <laughs> it just is what it is. I mean, he got Kevin Durant to come to the Golden State Warriors. And that's when we thought that Kevin Durant might, you know, it was Jocelyn was going back and forth. He might go. He might come back. Will he stay or will he go? We didn't know. But as soon as they said he's mean with Jerry West, me and my dog Rampage said, it's a wrap, dog. He's going, and that's just the end of it. So I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe Jerry West just wants to keep himself young. Maybe just just wants to keep himself doing stuff. We all know people that, we, that we've known. Like you see somebody like Joe Paterno, when his job was over, he just died. He died from a broken heart. Or like, you know, like my butt, like my best friend's dad always tells me. He says, you got to keep doing something because if you, you know, a lot of people that when they stop doing what they're doing, uh, you know, they, they might retire and then uh, they don't go be a greeter at Walmart. They don't go do this or that. And then they die shortly after. So after you after you clean up the lawn and, and, and do everything around the house, what else can you do? And I'm sure he's got people to do that. So that's why he just wants to keep himself active. I don't know what this is going to mean for the Clippers, though, man. Maybe he just sees this whole thing is in disarray and people are talking about leaving. Uh, you know, they're talking about Blake maybe leaving. They're talking about Chris Paul, like we already said, maybe going to the uh, San Antonio Spurs or whatever. I don't know what, what impact it's going to have. But if Jerry West goes over there to the Clippers, I... I can see everybody staying or they're just going to build something else, man. I mean, this is one of the greatest masterminds in the NBA. And maybe he just had good talent. You know, you guys may disagree. You may agree. But, uh, you know, either way it goes, he's been the architect of some championship teams. You can't take that away from the man. Why you got a 12-car garage? <laughs> J.R. Smith liked an Instagram image of Carmelo Anthony in a Cleveland Cavaliers jersey. Now, we all know that that doesn't mean a whole lot. Right? I mean, people like stuff on Twitter all the time. People like stuff on Instagram all the time. It can get you in trouble. It can't get you in trouble. But anyway, President underscore dope put this out. Yo, Mel, you know you want to do it. I'm taking Blake Griffin too. <laughs> Shout out to all the LeBron haters. Y'all got it tonight. Now, this was put up shortly after the Cleveland Cavaliers obviously, you know, lost to the uh, Golden State Warriors. This wouldn't even be such a bad idea. Now, J.R. Smith liked the post indicating that this might be something that he may like to see or maybe he just liked the picture and thought it was funny i don't know let me tell you my feelings on the whole thing Melo, if they could make the money work going to the Cavs, i think could have some somewhat the same effect on the Cavs as KD had on the warriors now i'm not saying that he's going to be the scoring machine that KD would be or you know they'd be able to work everything out and you'd be able to just just turn him loose with the ball but i do feel like Someone like Melo is something that the Cavaliers are missing. Like, now, don't get me wrong. LeBron can score, Kyrie can score, and Kevin Love can score. But what I saw from the finals, it was a lot of high-effort scoring. I don't, I don't know if that even makes sense to you guys, but what I'm saying, it was high-effort. It was like KD would just come down the court. He's, he knows he's going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. It's either going to be LeBron, it's going to be Kyrie, it's going to be somebody else. If it's LeBron, he's going to try to have him on the perimeter. If it were anyone else... KD just cut to the lane, try to catch the ball in the post, cut to the paint, and uh, and, and get an easy layup. Or he's just going to shoot from downtown, you know, if, if it were LeBron, or, you know, he tried to take him off the dribble or what have you. KD was willing to accept that. A lot of people were saying that, you know, Paul George might be a good fit for Cleveland. I don't know that Paul George is going to have that drive, would have that drive to be like, I need to get like 38 points. Somebody like... Carmelo Anthony will welcome that. But can you turn him loose in a situation like that? We know Melo can score with the best of them. We know that there's nobody that can check him one-on-one -on -one really outside of, you know, maybe KD since his defense has gone up a little bit or LeBron James, you know. But there's there's nobody that can, that can defend uh, Melo one-on-one. -on -one. While he's not the best offensive player in the league, I've always said that he has more tools to beat you than anybody in the league. He can go inside, he can go outside, he can take you off the dribble, he can post you up, he can he can do he can do almost anything. And the only thing that's stopping him is himself at times. So I, I just don't know. I mean, I see him having the same type of impact where they can just spread the floor at that point. Um, 
and just turn him loose. But what position would he play? I guess it really doesn't matter because if you got Kyle Corver at your two and you put Melo there, that's definitely an upgrade, even if you're even if you're just playing with two small forwards and, and just calling in a non-traditional lineup. I don't know, but I could see Melo having I could definitely see Melo having the same effect on this team that uh, KD had. I'm not going to say that it would be as efficient because Melo is a volume score, but at the same time, I could definitely see him having the same effect or the same same type of effect that, um, you know, the, the iso ball, turn him loose and see how many points he can give you that KD had for the Warriors. Why you pulling out the rapper's card? Speaking of championship talk, man, I got a question for you guys. How do you feel about KD going to the Warriors now, now that he's gone and actually won the championship, anything less than the championship obviously would have been a failure. But at the same time, he did it. This is like one of those things where you do something shady, now you have to go do it. And he actually did it. He pulled it off. They won the championship. I mean, a lot of people are going to say he should have won the championship. How do I feel about it? Y'all see my video from, from the beginning. I didn't agree with it. I think it made him look weak, but at the same time, it does not matter. I'm, I'm one of those people that's man enough to realize it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't, like, you have the right to think anything that you want to, but the person who about whom you think it has the right to not care about what you think as well. So it, it's just a little give and take there, and I'm sure that Warriors fans don't care what I think. I'm sure that KD definitely doesn't care what I think. But at the end of the day, what do you think about him going to the uh, Golden State Warriors now? I understand why he went. It's like you being in the gym. You lose to some guys that are playing team ball. You're struggling on your team. You're clearly the best player in the gym. And, and you're like, I can't. I just can't get the ball. I just can't get the ball with enough time to do anything. And then you get beat by some old heads. Not even old heads. Just some guys that are playing team ball. They're just playing fundamental, super fundamental team ball. And they're like, hey, yo, you nice, man. You want to play on our team? Because our guy, we lost one. You know, do you want to step up? And then when you get over there, not only do they allow you to play with them, but they're going to make you the focal point, And they're going to do everything to make you successful. So you just do what you do. We just want you to come over here, do what you do, and we're gonna feed you the ball. We're gonna give you every opportunity to be successful, and we're gonna play around you. I mean, who wouldn't take that opportunity? Now, it doesn't matter if you would or wouldn't. It still kind of makes you makes you look weak because you lost to that team. But I'm just saying, I'm just putting a, I'm just putting a scenario out there where it's like we've all done that in the gym. Now sometimes. I might be in the gym and I'm like, you know what, man? No, nah, I don't want to play with y'all. I want to beat y'all. And I've done that plenty of times as well. But there are some times if that team has a nice point guard and it's all the pieces and I know I'm just going to get to just, just turn loose and I got a and I got a cookie cake, a cupcake matchup, I'm going for it, man. So, you know, it is what it is. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think. Should KD have stayed? Do you just, did you lose a tremendous amount of respect for him? Do you understand why he did it, but that doesn't mean you respect him anymore? That's, that's where I am. I understand completely why both sides did it, but that doesn't mean I like the move. I'm not the biggest fan of the move. So, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, you guys let me know down in the comments, and uh, we'll catch y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Hello! 360 out this month.